It's a bit like learning a language, C-Team, actually. That's, that's the thing I often compare it to when people ask about it. It's like learning a language. And and much like learning a language, when you've, when you've learnt one plane, learning another is easier, and then another after that is progressively even easier, and so on and so on and so on, until it gets to a point where you can... You can jump in an aeroplane in the sim that you've never flown before and within about 10 minutes you can figure out pretty much how it works. Alright, beautiful. Cruise speed, 259 kilometers an hour. Why does, why does, this is another thing. Why does, why does Microsoft Flight Sim always list stuff in the most useless units? Nobody in the freaking world uses kilometers an hour as, as, an, as airspeed. Everybody uses knots and yet Microsoft Flight Sim is like, oh, it's max speed is 259 kilometers per hour. I'm like, that's really useless information. Thanks, Flight Sim. Thanks, guys. They do, they do it with wind speed as well. They measure wind, they, they put the display of the wind speed as either miles per hour or kilometers per hour. And I was like, that is supremely unhelpful. I need it in knots, you bastards. Anyway, welcome to the Twin Otter, everybody. It's a plane from 1955, I think. It's old as shit. It's a really old aeroplane at this point, kind of. I think, I mean, like, you know, specifically this one isn't isn't that old, but it was probably still still manufactured in the 70s now I think about it, actually. I don't think they've built any new ones of these in ages. Um... Yeah, I, 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 set it to, I set it to hybrid. It still does this, even if you put it in hybrid. The only difference is it uses, if you put it in hybrid, it uses feet for altitude instead of meters. That's the only difference. They still insist on putting speed in, in, in kilometers an hour or miles per hour. Anyway, there it is. It, it's cool. Very nice. I like the paint job with the, with the lime green and the purple. It's a neat touch. Right, uh, up in the cockpit. Um, got a control lock in here. Let's get rid of that. So, wiggle this around so it's out of the way. There we go. It's got this really weird, uh, like, like it's actually only one control column, and then we just like built a pair of yokes off of it, like antlers. Uh, it's, it's the only aeroplane I've ever seen have a have a layout like this for those controls, and it's it's downright strange. Um. And it's also got the throttle controls, the engine controls on the ceiling as well. This this plane is bonkers, honestly. It's just designed by a madman, I'm sure. Um, this is where all the passengers sit in the back here. I got some views set up for out of the windows. Um, you know, I don't know how many people you can get in this. How how many how many seats are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Nineteen people, not including the uh, the crew. It's, it's, it's not bad, really. Okay, uh, I think the battery's up here, isn't it? There we go. Let there be light and noise and all the rest of it. No oh, armrest for you. Okay, I'm just gonna go about setting this stuff up now. At this point, I'm so. Ooh, uh, is my flight plan loaded? Yeah, it is. Ah, nice, 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 nice. So what, what's my route according to my OFP document I've got here off on my other monitor? It's it's we go off runway five, we head direct to Clyde, then we follow the L six O two airway to Bruce, um, and then direct to the Tiri VR, and then and then straight to Barra from there. We're landing on its runway in quotation marks two five. Landing on the beach in whatever direction the wind is is, is is blowing, I guess, is more like it, really. Um, what where, what, was, uh, what, what altitude are we going at? What, what, how high are we going? 10,000 feet a day. Ooh. It's quite high compared to the usual. 10,000 feet will set down the altitude. Oh, I think I know the one you mean. Is it Buffalo? JB. 
Is it Buffalo? It might be Buffalo. You mentioned they fly, still fly DC-3s. I think that's Buffalo you're talking about. Yeah, that's right. You know, I haven't decided if I'm going to put this on YouTube yet. If I did decide to put this on YouTube... Hi, YouTube people. Hello. Depends on whether or not this feels like it's worth saving. Oh god, it's done the thing again. So Microsoft Flight Sim has this lovely bug at the moment where your mouse cursor just disappears for no reason. The only way you can fix it is by moving the camera around or by hitting the tab key on your keyboard. It's so weird. It's just a, such a little thing. It's easy to fix. You just move around a bit. But... Dear Christ on a bendy bus, it's annoying after a while. Especially when you're like in the ha halfway through trying to manipulate some control or something and then the game just decides, <laughs> yeah, mate, sorry, your, uh, your mouse cursor is just going to go now. It's just going to disappear. Schrodinger's high, high YouTube. <laughs> it's, ooh, I like it like that. Uh, right, let's put some lights on. I am satisfied that the flight plan and the GPS is all loaded up, so that's pretty much our flight prep done, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, switch all those lights on. Uh, what else do we want to do? I suppose we could set this up. We've got 10,000 feet in the box. Uh, we can put on the... the transponder. Someone give me a made-up transponder code. Four digits between one, 0 and 7. DC-3 is a couple of C-46s and some Lockheed Electras. Yeah, yeah, they have lots of really cool old airplanes. There's actually a, um... There's a, there's a plane for, for, for this sim that, um... 4269. Uh, can't do nines, I'm afraid. 3531, three, three, C team was first, so let's do that. 3531, there we go, lovely. Um... Right. Yeah, there's a there's a it's it's a Boeing two four seven, gorgeous little prop airliner from the nineteen thirties. That the the the, 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 the was it Wings forty two is the name of the developer that made it for this sim. I'm really thinking of getting it. It's only like twenty bucks apparently. And it looks really 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 nice because like they've done a proper like full on like detailed modeling of the engines and stuff. You got to make sure like your your oil pressures and temperatures are all right, otherwise the thing bursts into flames. Like, I love that stuff, so um, I'm really thinking of getting that. And they did like they modeled like the whole sort of like 1930s radio navigation as well, and uh, and that kind of thing. And it, it, it just looks really cool. I'm a sucker for old like ye old retro vintage airlinery stuff, so I'm kind of thinking of grabbing that. <sighs> right. Right. right, right. Let's go Navigraph. Let me look at some charts. Flight plan was detected. Load it. And go. All right, you can see our, our plan now on, 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 on the chart. Pretty much. We, we come up here, we follow this airway, which you can actually see on here. It's the L602. Goes this way. Um, and then uh, <laughs> and then we get to Tyree, and then from that point onwards, it's kind of just like, shrug, whatever, dotted line goes that way. <laughs> I don't know how they do that in real life. I guess maybe they probably get very radar vectors or something. Or maybe you just cancel your IFR clearance and then just go VFR the rest of the way. That's an interesting... Yeah, I don't know how they do that. Anyway, I'm talking about stuff that most of you don't even understand. It's just, sorry, it's idle musing on my part. Stream of consciousness, please ignore it. Uh... <laughs> Open charts list. Right, I want the airport... Info chart. No, that's, that's not the right one. That's the right one. There we go. Got a nice pink arrow to tell us where we are. Uh, so we're at the domestic pier. Ramp L. And if we're going off zero five, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get out of here, push back, or maybe just turn around, and then go via Gulf all the way down. You know what? We could probably take off from Echo. We're in a twin otter after all. Yeah, screw it. We'll go to Gulf, then we'll go to Echo. And then zoom. Off we go. Lovely, lovely, lovely. The runway heading is 049 degrees. This is why I came in here in the first place. I wanted to find that out. So 049 on, on, on this. That's what I want. Um, I'm going to set that to GPS. 049, so that'd be like... Put it there we go. Perfect. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, let's 
pin that chart so I can look at it later. Um, we don't have a SID to use, do we? I don't think. It's kind of that's a really weird little. <laughs> it's kind of odd. That is kind of odd. Let me just have a look at the GPS again. That is interesting. Kind of whoop, but the squiggly line goes that way and then this way. Maybe it's so you can click it. Maybe so you can get enough altitude to join the airway. I think you have to be like a minimum altitude to do it. So, anyway, okay, maybe that's it. Okay, that's that's cool. That's that's good. So destination, uh, somewhere in that direction, yeah. A beach over there somewhere, that's our destination. <laughs> uh, these are in the game, but no, 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 you, ha you have to install a little, little Navigraph plugin thing to, to get this on the toolbar. Um, to, 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 to actually get this. I'm afraid, yeah, it's not, in, it's not in the game by default, I don't think. You have to download a thing. I'm pretty sure I downloaded a thing to make this happen. It's it's okay. It's not as good as Avitab in X-Plane. Avitab in X-Plane is way, way, way less of a ball leg to use, but this this is okay. It'll do. Alright, cool. And I, I don't think Barra actually has any charts. Does Barra have any charts? I'd be stunned if it does. Charts list. Oh my god, it does. <laughs> oh man, they have an actual chart with official runways on on the uh, on the beach. Well, I never. That's quite funny to me, honestly. It's just it's a beach. It's a big bit of sand. There's no runways there at all. It's just sand and a couple of wind socks. Um, but okay. Seems they've got their paperwork in order. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's pen it. Why not? Why the heck not? All right, close that. Uh, close this all, actually, really. We don't need it right now. Okay, cool. Uh, I think we're ready to pretty much to go now. Set my takeoff course on there. And yeah, we're gonna take off. I mean, let me just brief this for my benefit, not really so much, uh, not not so much you, you guys really, if I'm honest. It's mostly for my benefit, I'm, I'm thinking this through. Take off, follow runway heading. Um, and then we'll climb. We're going up to 10,000 feet. Uh, at some point, I'll hit nav. This is set to GPS. Um, and then I will go hit alt on there, dial in about 1,500 feet per minute climb. Um, bring the props probably back a little bit. And then we'll be good to go, I think. Got the squawk thingy set down there, the squawk code. Uh, I, I, I'm pretty much ready to do this, aren't I? I'm ready to rock and roll. Okay, cool. Let's get this thing started up, right? Booster pumps. On. Uh, I think I've switched on all the lights outside, haven't I? All the ones we care about. Yeah. Oh, emergency exit lights will arm those. Like compartment fans on, like I, I guess. What does this do? Oh, it's a little, it's a little overhead light. What the heck is that? Never noticed that before. All right, windshield's fine. Uh, okay. All right, this this might get loud. This this plane is kind of loud when it starts up. Sim brief. That's where I got the flight plan from. Sim brief. It's uh, it's useful for doing commercial flights with. It's uh, I can't imagine it being terribly useful if you just wanted to do little VFR things, but I find it very useful for for commercial flights, like the one we're doing now. Alright, we've got engine one going nicely. 
Uh, let's go with engine two now. Again, loud. Cover your ears. The plan is this, this is a this is a twin otter. Havlin something something twin otter. So it's made by Aerosoft. You can get it on the marketplace thingy. They've, it, they've, they've released this plane for like virtually every flight from under the sun, you know. I remember this was one of the first planes I ever bought in FSX, like freaking eight years ago. Then they then they re then they re-released it in P3D, and then they re-released it in X plane, and now they've re-released it in this. It's still basically the same bloody plane. I think they've just updated sounds and some of the texture resolution. Props. Let's bring them forward. To I think that's like the low idle or something like that. It'll be good enough for taxi, basically. Get a bit of that turbo prop roar. Yeah. This this one hit is without playing. You need to move, dude. Right, normally I think I'd just turn the plane around and go, but I never will do the pushback thingy. I've got a pushback plug in, I've never used it before. Where is it? Pushback, there we go. Toolbar pushback. Okay. Free plan pushback? How to use. Click and drag to move the map around. Click to place a waypoint. Press backspace to remove last wet set waypoints. Scroll and hold control key to zoom map in and out. Scroll to adjust waypoint heading. Press enter to accept plan route. Okay, so click and drag to move the map. But I don't want to go over there, that pushed me straight to the terminal building. That'd be funny, but not actually what I want. Can I, how do I do this? Backspace to remove last set waypoint. Maybe I have to cleanse this first. Scroll and hold control. Oh, oh, I see. Right. Oh, it's really easy to use, actually. It's, it's just like better pushback for, for an X-Plane. So, it's just really like that. Enter. Yeah, whoever made this would use better pushback in X-Plane. He was like, I want that, but in, in, but in Flight Sim. Uh, request. Okay, good. Release parking. I'm just going to mysteriously float backwards if they actually got like a little tug. Oh, they've actually got like a little tug thing. Check it out. I'm going outside. Rah! Oh, I can't. Visible wall. Also loud. Crap. How is the audio, by the way? When it's not, when I'm not like doing stupid shit like opening the window like that. Is it? How is the audio? I think the last time I streamed this was it was a smidge on the loud side. If 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 I can turn it down, if you need me to. And the door is closed. It's good. Okay. <laughs> it's fine when you're in the cockpit. Horrible when you're outside. Oh goody. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. We're gonna fix this. Uh, general options. Sound. Fucking turn that right the way down. I wish there's a, there was like an external and internal volume bar. That would be really helpful if that was a thing that actually existed. But no. That should be a bit less uh, obnoxious. Although, admittedly... That's, that's still going to be pretty loud, but hopefully not outrageously so. Do you know what, honestly, I think I need to just watch the stream for myself to figure this out. Outrageously so. Do you know what, honestly, I think I need to just watch the stream for myself to figure this out. Outrageously so. Do you know what, honestly, I think I... Oh my god, endlessly looping audio. Make it stop. Alright, no, it seems to be okay. It seems to be okay. Yeah, the poor tug operator is just like, dude, the brakes. What the hell's wrong with you? Yeah, sorry, sorry, the brakes, right. Right, brakes. Yeah. 
thing. I've never seen one of these little, little thing of what's this before. This is cool. So he, like, he scoops it under the wheel and then does he lift it up a bit with like a little hydraulic jack? Bro, are you actually going to push me back or what's going on? Oh, maybe, maybe the brakes have gotten stuck again. I think I, f I found this with it ever since I got my new rudder pedals and the brakes sometimes get a little stuck and I have to manually just tap them in order for things to work properly. Yeah, okay, I've, I've released the heart, heart parking brake now. What do I do? I click hold? Oh, we click hold, okay. Also, this dude's gonna bat. Oh, he's get about to get like. Like that dude in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh god! Absolutely total. Yeah, you, we, were, we were thinking the same thing, Ventus. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> it's a very, very serious stream. Very serious simulator. Okay, guys. No humour allowed. I apologise for my behaviour. <laughs> Alright, there's some other stuff we can do while we're waiting for this guy to finish. Uh, phrasing. Bleed air we can put on. Electrical generators on, so we're not continuing to drain the poor battery. And that's more or less good now. For the moment, I put the window windshield heating on, I suppose. There we go. Is he done? Oh, he's he's on his way out. So I guess I guess we're done now, right? Just close this menu. He's going to go off on his merry way. Don't have a very good top speed, these things, do they? Gotta fly to his funeral now. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Right, uh, flight controls and all that garbage. Are they working? Are the brakes working? Let me take the old... Yep, they seem to be fine. Taxi light up here, there is. There we go. Pito heat on as well, actually. That would be a bad one to forget. Can we move now? Oh, I forgot. In Microsoft Flight Sim, the ground is made of porridge. Or is my parking brake just still on or something? There we go. Parking brake was on. My, well, my apologies, Flight Sim. Although your ground is still made of porridge. You have to apply way more thrust to actually get the plane moving than you really would have to in real life, I think. Okay, so we're going up this way to Golf, and then following Golf along till we get to Echo, and then... On to Zarambe, and then less, and then we go! Okay, flaps 10 for takeoff. You see the little flap thingy moving over there on the right side. Control tower. Why? What's wrong with it? Oh my god, it's gigantic. I'm pretty sure Glasgow's control tower is not that massive in real life. <laughs> uh, yeah, some of this auto-generated scenery is a bit weird. I I went to an airport. I think it was Bristol in the sim the other day, and like the the the. the the sim just had no idea what to do with the terminal at Bristol for some reason. They put like a hangar on the roof and then a bunch of like random sheds in the middle of the ramp. It was so freaking weird. I 
Sim just did a total brain fart. Could not figure out what on earth it was supposed to be doing. Okay, Echo is next one along here, it looks like. I can read signs. Lorna Glasgow's a tiny box. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm, I'm, I'm sure... <laughs> I th I'm sure I'd remember it if it had been that big the last time I came here. <laughs> when, when, when they put that thing up? Florence flew over a dam in Hawaii and there are a bunch of office buildings. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> Yeah, the, 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 the default like, airport scenery is, is quite often completely, completely wacky, but I, I, you know what, honestly, I'm fine with it, because the alternative is basically just paying some, some developer like 20 bucks just for having a slightly nicer airport, and I, I, don't, I, I just don't have the time for that, so. Or the money, really. Uh, right. Ready to go, okay, lights. Camera. Oh, actually, yeah. Switch that to altitude reporting, and then action laps are good. I'm gonna need to set these things to maximum power, aren't I? There we go. Props to fault. Uh, I thought your last flight in series with an illustrious Frenchman. Ah, oh, Gaston, of course. It's excellent. Have you plans to return to the genre on YouTube later? Hell yeah, man. Especially now I've got a new PC. Yeah, i got some ideas. Uh, more IL-2 would obviously be lovely. But uh, I wouldn't mind also doing a bit of Strike Fighters 2. Some jets. Like, specifically janky Cold War jets from the 60s. I think that might be quite fun. It has a really good dynamic campaign system, the Strike Fighters 2. Graphics are a bit meh, a bit sort of early, mid-2000s meh, but uh, gosh, it's a really fun game. Um, and then there's Rise of Flight as well, I suppose, uh, although it's um, it's Flying Circus these days. They basically, they, they made Flying Circus, which is essentially Rise of Flight, but running in the IL-2 engine. It's, it's quite nice. It's very pretty. Oh, it's my trim set. Ish. Take up the rudder trim isn't set, that's the main thing we need. There we go. Alright, let's skedaddle. I'm just gonna put the throttle to maximum. Goes right over the red bar on the torque meters down there. I've discovered that the Aerosoft Twin Otter is a bit wonky in its engine modeling and it actually will not take off unless you give it maximum welly. So in real life, this would cause the engines to explode. But, um,. In the game, we actually do have to do it. Once we're off the ground, it's fine. There we go. Okay, can I get ourselves roughly trimmed out a bit? Uh, what I didn't do, like a ninny, is put on also further in your damper. Taken off now, we don't actually need the, the auto feather anymore. Okay. Look, uh, a wee look here at the uh, GPS Majuka thing, whatever. Okay, let's go nav, engage, alt. Uh, oh, yeah, we need to set this back up to 10, 10k, don't we? Cancels my altitude when I do that. And then. Five, 1500 feet per minute up should be good. Let's increase up to maximum torque. It's really humming now. Nice. And now I put it on autopilot, we can just basically look out the window. Oh, I forgot to do the. I forgot to start the flight in Skytrack. Never mind. 
I'll do it another time. Probably quite a pretty flight. I wouldn't have mind doing it more than once, actually. All right. Really? I, I honestly, Predator, I find like vanilla way, way too easy. Vanilla's missions are so predictable. You take off, you fly to your waypoint, and then somewhere along the way, a, a flight of enemies will spawn. It, it, you can, you, it's almost like clockwork. I find, I find piece of PWCG gives you a lot more variety. I don't know quite what you exact, quite exactly what you're going to bump into. Is quite pretty, isn't it? Glass going all the glory back there. <laughs> Some of them always forget the flaps in this plane. Oh, I see what you mean. Oh, I, now I understand. Right, yeah. Fl PWCG Flying Circus. I haven't tried that yet, actually. I have to admit, so... Hmm, interesting. I mean, I, um, yeah, it's interesting. I don't know. It just depends on what plane you fly. I have to admit, when I when I do play Flying Circus, if I'm, if I'm in, the, in the Camel or the Dry Decker, I, I can quite easily get five kills a mission. Um, because... The, all, all the turn fighters are kind of just easy mode in Rise of Flight, really. Doing it in a SPAD or an SE5, on the other hand, that would be a lot trickier. Not hiding under gear. It doesn't go up. Yeah, the, 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 under, the undercarriage does not retract on the Twin Otter. It's fixed. Just double check if everything's going to do. You can see the trim in motion flashing up there. Nav, um, we have armed, click the arm button, I'm not even sure what that does if I'm honest with you, but hopefully once we get to 10,000 feet the, the plane should level off is the idea. We'll climb quite slowly actually, let's see if I can bring this back down to like 1,000 feet per minute, there we go. I'm going to set up to 10,000 feet in about 4 minutes and it will mean the our forward speed will be a little less shaky looking. I don't know what the best spot to climb speed in this plane is, if I'm honest. I actually don't have a clue. I'm getting a bit more power though, actually. There we go. Power at max torque. That'll increase with altitude. So. I'm so annoyed that I forgot to start the tracking software. This flight isn't going to get logged on my profile and that, and that, that irritates me, but oh well. <sighs> Should have started it as soon as we the ground. Well, from the pilot's window, you need a pretty long stick. Probably. The tricky bit would be getting the stick over there without having it chopped in half by the propeller, if you ask me. That's the hard part. The window doesn't really open either, so you'd have to open the door and then kind of lean out. Yeah, it'd probably, it probably the marshmallow would probably taste a bit, you know, fuelly. <laughs> Can't guarantee it would be a great success. Yeah, 
down here. Yeah, okay, we're climbing up towards Lomon, and then we'll make a pretty harsh, le sharp left turn over to Clyde, and then a right turn on, on, onto the, uh, the, the airway. And I, I'm pretty sure this dog leg here is just to allow us to climb up to 10,000 feet before we enter the airway. I suspect that that's what that's, what that's about. back. There we go, back to cruise, so it's way less noisy. Not deafening the poor passengers anymore. So it goes into a nice gentle hum. Making that turn now. Here we are. Should be anyway. Marshmallow while wind walking. Ah, yeah. Easy mode, mate. Easy mode. It's very pretty. To be fair, if you download all the um, ortho photos, you can you can get similar to this in X Plane, but um, it takes up a little hard, lot of hard drive space. And, um, and Microsoft lights up has much nicer looking clouds and atmospherics. So. Also, to be honest, I think Microsoft lights up runs a bit better than X Plane does. I think it's I think it's probably better optimized. I guess it has to be if they want you want to run it on an Xbox, right? That said, I, I, I like X Plane because it's really moddable. It has, it has the moddability of like a like an early two thousands PC game. You just drag and drop stuff into folders. It's beautiful. I was trying to mod for this. It's, it's, a, it's a nightmare. Where in Scotland are we? Well, um, can I get a map of some sort up. The VFR map. Here we go. We are just northwest of Glasgow. We're going up this way, and we're going to the Isle of Barra, up there. Where we're going to land on a beach. And I'm not kidding. The airport of Barra is literally a beach. It's a load of sand. We're going to go land on it. Hopefully. I, I, I've never tried to land a Barra in, the, in, the, in, in this set before. I hope we manage to stop in time. <laughs> I hope the wind isn't completely balked because Microsoft Lightsome has a real problem with crosswinds. Like the, the crosswind effect of the wind is, is super mega amaze balls exaggerated, which means that it can be almost impossible to land with a crosswind sometimes in this sim, uh, which is not like in real life. Did you open the door, step out of the plane. We, you might, we might be able to open the door, but I. I couldn't step out of the plane even while we were on the ground, actually, which is kind of annoying. Oh no, it's stuck, I'm afraid. It won't open. It's locked. The plane has preempted our shenanigans. I'm starting to make that turn past Clyde now. Good. All right, see you in a bit, Barman. This flight apparently takes about an hour, so uh, you know, prob we've probably got like another 40 minutes to go or something. 50, 40 minutes. It's not particularly reassuring that the captain tried to open the door, though. <laughs> <laughs> so 
see if I can get the drone cam to work. It's, it's kind of awkward and weird. The drone camera. In this. Uh, the camera system in this in this in this sim in general is kind of difficult to use and annoying, and I don't really know why. I mean, I, I mean, I know why. I just don't know why they had to make it that way. I had to rebind like a ton of keys just to be able to move the camera around with my mouse instead of having to use the numpad for some bizarre reason. And I just pressed five on the numpad and it's simply back to chase and for some reason. if you get too far in. Did you get a customized pilot? Um, I think you can choose what clothes they wear. Of like, a, where you get like a selection of like clothes depending on like what type of plane you're, you're flying or you can just set it to default to whatever the plane type is so you can have your little dude dressed in ordinary clothes or in an airline captain's outfit or whatever but beyond that I'm not sure actually no I think maybe no I think you can actually I think you can I think you can customize it a little bit now I think about it it's been ages um yeah you can change skin color and gender I think yeah so you can customize it a little bit or something I paid a huge amount of attention to if I'm honest Well, sometimes the auto photos do do hiccup a bit, don't they? But yeah, <laughs> we had because I <laughs> there's a bit of radiate radiation leak here that uh, the government didn't tell anyone about because uh, I can't help but notice that all of the grass is dead along this line here. Can this bad boy do a barrel roll? I uh, probably. I, actually, I don't know. I don't know if, if you went upside down, you know, if you had any negative Gs, you might... Uh, why, these engines might cut out, actually. I, I don't know if you could, if you could run a P Pratt PT-6 upside down. Maybe as long as the boost pumps are on, I guess. <laughs> oh no, that's a nice view. This is the first time in, in like a week I've flown in Scotland in the sim and the weather was actually nice enough that you could see any of the terrain. <laughs> Time. It was just clouds for days, fog, wind, rain.
Apparently we're building a lot more of these in the near future. I wonder if the wind farms in the game, like, do they... Is it wind dependent? Like, if it's really, if it's not, if, it, if, if there's like no wind, do they still turn in the game, is what I'm saying. Oh, look, some wee hoses down there. part of the world to live in. Internet's probably shite up here, but you know. You win some, you lose some. I don't know who lives there big ass little path going all the way down to wherever. Must be quite far from Tesco too. <laughs> far enough away perhaps that it might be quicker to just grow the food. Ten thousand feet right now. If we wanted to get back down, how how soon would we have to start descending? Let's see, three times tables. Uh, ten times thirty. Thirty miles. So thirty miles away from Barra is when we need to start going back down again. Ish. That's the closest supplier of iron brew. I bet the dude on that hill is the supplier. The satellite image has trees here, in the dark bit. Then, wherever wherever the game gets its like data from, on you know where objects should be, has kind of decided. Uh, actually, no, all of this should be trees. So now you've just got trees that are different colours, like dark trees and then light trees. Same up here. Look. This forest is apparently bigger than the satellite image says it is. It's it's kind of it's interesting, really. I I, I find it interesting anyway. Like like at a glance, it's it's so beautiful and pretty and realistic. But then like you you zoom in and you look at little details like that, and you still you start to see like the man behind the behind the curtain a little bit, don't you? dark tree. Welcome. There are two kinds of trees in this world, you hear. You land on an open field or a highway and walk around. Um, I suppose you probably could, yeah. I suppose, you, I mean, you'd have to use the drone cam to go walk around. 
because you can't, I can't actually leave. I'm, I'm, I'm this like bodiless, um, dispossessed spirit that can't, that haunts the interior of this twin otter and cannot leave even when the door is open. So, um, I suppose you'd have to use the drone cam to actually go outside and walk around. Game does look surprisingly pretty actually when you're on the ground because it you know draws like 3D grass and everything. But the snacks in that plane are abysmal if there are any. I think this is like I feel like this is probably like like bringing your own packed lunch territory really if I'm honest. Like just put a packet of crisps in your bag before you leave type stuff. is formed up here that's like really interesting it looks all sort of craggy and like it all sweeps in one particular direction you know truly the arse end of nowhere the only real downside is this weird sort of outline it seems to draw around coastlines you see that the edge of the water is just sort of like penciled in this dark line around everything. That doesn't look so good. Aside from that, it's very pretty. Norwegian coastline, the same kind of sweeping vibe. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of, um, if you told me this was Norway, I, I, I'd believe you. Yeah, well, yeah, I wish some Vikings look about. I mean, they, they did, right? Like, they they colonised this part of Scotland. And I can see why. They're probably just like, ah, oh, reminds me of hope. Twin Otter wasn't really built for speed. I don't mind. Whole kind, of, kind of the whole point of this trip was to basically just do something that would take a little while, not too long, but a little while, and would uh, would look very pretty out of the window. That was that was the, the chief objective. I'm just a little miffed that I forgot to start my my tracking software, so I'm not going to get this logged on the website. But never mind, actually my cat is at the door, I'm just going to go open it for him, hold on folks. Have a Colin. Do you have any words of wisdom for us? No, just bell jingling. He's actually quite a noisy cat, you know. He does a lot of chirping and meowing. He just never wants to do it on command. Do you? 
you get shy whenever there's a microphone or a camera around. You're a good boy there. What have you been up to then? Chasing birds? Catching mice? saw you hunting outside earlier today. I was at the kitchen window looking out into the back garden. And then suddenly he just bursts from the undergrowth and sprints across the patio. Don't know what he was after, I couldn't see anything. Does it when he wants food? He does, don't you? It's not a big, uh, you're not a big foodie though, are you, cat? I mean, you're licking your lips now, which means you probably did just eat the rest of your food, but... He's not a huge foodie, this cat. He's more into playing. I think it's because he's still very young. He's, um... Gosh, what? And for about a year and a half now, I think? No. I think he's about a year and a half old. He was just under a year old and I got him. You'll be going up in two years now, so you call it. Anyway, yeah, he's still very young and very bouncy. He's more interested in running around chasing things than he is in eating. The well, last cat was named Colin. He gained his angel wings two months ago. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I salute you, other Colin out there. over halfway it looks like. What's the long distance of the last leg of the journey? Probably not a way to find out here, is there? Night mode. Oh, actually it's quite good in night mode, doesn't it? I think I might keep that on. There's the problem, you need an invisible camera and mic to get in without his knowledge. Yeah, you really do, actually. I keep trying to film him at the moment, because he's a very silly, derpy cat that does silly, derpy things that are very filmable. Someone on the Discord had an idea of like making little YouTube shorts of just Colin being a dumbass. Probably get loads of views. Um, the problem is, every time I switch the camera on, he starts being sensible. It's like he knows. In fact, I'm sure he does. You know, when I'm holding the weird thing that, oh, uh, I'm just going to, like, not be weird now. I'm going to be an ordinary boring cat. They literally just control this airway. Yeah, I think I was right. I think once they get, once you get to Tyree here, you uh, you are out of controlled airspace at that point, aren't you? Pretty much. And then and then from that point on, you probably just go via far the rest of the way, wouldn't you, or something? I imagine. Because there's no there's no instrument procedure to get to Barra or to land at Barra. So you'd probably have to be a day when the weather is decent. And you go along all the way to here, and then you you call up to ATC on the radio and say, right, cancel IFR. And then you make the rest of your way there visually. I suppose. Probably how it works. Out of controlled airspace, not out of control airspace. <laughs> uh, there's, a, there's an important, subtle but important distinction there. see 27.7 miles I assume that's 27 miles to Tyree oh 
Oh, see, now this is the problem with the with the with the using the non-legacy mode of of uh, of of mouse control here in the sim. I can't push this knob in to use the push cursor mode in the GPS, which means I can't use the GPS because I can't push the button. needs to be pushed or twisted in order for me to actually scroll through this flight plan here. I was talking about this in Discord earlier, but the, uh, the an annoying thing about Microsoft Flight Sim is if you put the, the controls into legacy mode, like the mouse pointer into legacy mode, um, you can, you know, you can, you can, you know, twist the knob and push it if you want to. But the problem is, if you want to move any of the things, like the heading bug here around, you have to do it like this, really, really, really slowly. And it's so annoying. I don't know why they can't just get the controls right. Why is it so hard, Microsoft? Why can't you just, you know, make the controls for the, for the switches work properly? Where are we? Uh, I'm going to map up. Let me show you. We are there's Scotland. We are here. Weather for uh, for Lara. Metar. No meta available. Oh, good. Very helpful. Can I get it from Google? EGPR meta. Meta Barra Airport. Wind is three four six at nineteen knots. Pressure is one zero zero six millibars. Jolly good. Don't know why. Don't know why you can't. The game can't just tell me that. But fine. So when we go down below about six thousand feet, I need to switch this to one zero zero six millibars on the altimeter of the bar. The wind's three four six at nineteen knots. So. Basically coming almost directly from the north, so I guess when we land on the beach, we need to be landing from the south. Uh, where's the where's the where's the map of the so-called runways? Okay, so we need to. Okay, yeah, if we use three three or you know the patch of sand that is vaguely runway three three. <laughs> We land kind of like that way. We'll probably be all right. Just need to avoid those crosswinds, like the plague in, in Microsoft Flight Sim, because as I explained earlier, the the crosswind effect are, is is really stupidly uh, like like way too much in, in the sim. It's very unrealistic. in a patch. This is, this is probably my number one thing they need to, they, for my money that they need to fix with the game at the minute. It's the crosswind uh, weather vaning effect uh, when you try and land with the, with, the, with the wind blowing across the runway. Um, they need to fix that and they need to fix the mouse cursor randomly disappearing. The perfect plane for when your runway is just a beach. Yep, pretty much. Pretty much. What makes the Twin Otter so lovely? It is a versatile machine that can land on just about anything. There's there's loads of versions of it actually. If you do get the Aerosoft Twin Otter, there's loads of versions of it that, that you can get in the sim. Um, I should have shown them to you earlier. I forgot to do so. But uh, there's like a ski version for landing on snow, 
Um, there's a Tundra version, which has these extra large, like, monster truck Tundra tires. Um, for landing on rough ground. There's float plane versions, so you can land on water. Yeah, there is, yeah, there is a water version, yep. Yeah, you can get the float plane version as well. It's quite fun. It's quite cool. You get lots of different variants of it. There's a, there's a bunch of cargo versions as well, if you just want to haul some packages around. Which I, I have to admit, I like doing, actually. I, I like doing cargo flights and flights and it's sort of like... I don't know why, it just... I guess it reminds me of Euro Truck. <laughs> I need to maybe give Air Hauler 2 a try at some point. Be kind of fun. Air Hauler 2 is like um, this program you can get that you can run alongside Flight Sim, and it basically let you let you run your own little cargo hauling airline. You buy the planes and you know pilots and stuff like that, and make money and build your way. It's just like just like the, the economic side of, of Euro Truck. Pretty much right after we pass over Tyree, we'll um, we'll start descending. I want to go down to. Uh, it's probably. I don't know, fifteen hundred, something like that. Probably quite low. I'm gonna get right under the cloud so we can see what we're doing. There is a lot more cloud up here, isn't there? Think of it. Not much to see actually out the window now, is there? Because we're just going over the uh, the North Atlantic Ocean right now. That's something I always meant to do. Actually, in in FSX with the with the with the twin otter was actually flight in Antarctica with the, with the ski version. I never got around to it. I think mostly because the Antarctica scenery was a bit wank <laughs> in FSX. But uh, I imagine Antarctica probably looks quite pretty in this. I should do that at some point. I'll go off to the South Pole and twin otter. I've landed there. I actually did it the other day. I did a flight from Barra to Tyree. Problem I found though is that the airport down there, like in the sim, they've just done the runways and nothing else. In real life, there's a taxiway and um, and a parking ramp, and you can see them on the ground in the sim because of the satellite imagery. But what the game has done is because it's just arbitrarily decided that there is no taxiway there in the game. It's basically just grown grass all over it. So there's like this weird overgrown dilapidated taxiway and ramp that you heard that I was able to drive down in the sim. So it was kinda of, kind, of, kind of screwed up. Like a lot of the airports are in this game, to be completely honest with you. They they want you to spend more money on getting, you know, professionally made ones. So they, they, they make the they make the default airport scenery really really janky and weird. Like a scene from Jurassic Park. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe Jurassic Park 2, sure. <laughs> Can we see the airport from here, or is it pretty much just going right under us under that cloud? Mm -hmm. 
Oh, and another thing. Another thing about this sim that annoys me. It's a very small thing, but it annoys me. You can't do a flyby view. At least if you can, I've not been able to figure it out Figure out how. You can't do a flyby view where you just, the camera is still and then it watches the airplane go Neow! past. I mean, I am a simple man, okay? I like it when the airplane goes fast, right past me and goes Neow! alright? I like that. I enjoy being able to press a button on my keyboard and just watch that happen and listen to the sound of the engines. It is a simple, it is a small thing I ask of you, Microsoft, but please consider adding that to the game maybe you know it's, it's only been a thing in every other flight sim ever made by mankind it's just not in this one for some reason top 10 features of IL-2 yes <laughs> alright I've made that turn let's, let's start going down uh, oh, I think I've just commanded pitch mode. That's not what I want. I want VS. Vertical speed. 1,000 feet per minute will do nicely. Down to 1,500 feet. Click on. And watch the speed. Bring the levers back a little bit. The levers aren't moving, right? Okay, yeah. Apparently, if I move the camera and the levers at the same time, the levers don't move. That's that's really odd. Yeah, I don't want to overspeed. <laughs> I finally got around to getting the dash eight in in X plane actually the the the, night, the awesome fly J sim one having fun learning that lately. Twin is kind of like the Dash 8 though, it's like a really small, uh, cranky old miniature version of a Dash 8. Drone cam. I mean, I. The one thing my drone cam seems to be sideways right now. Let's fix that. Uh, I mean, this is the best I can do with the drone cam. Now. It's not. It's not the same, man. Do you know? You know what? You know what? I, you know what? I, I reckon the reason is why it doesn't have a flyby camera. I reckon it doesn't have it because the sound engine in this game can't do the sound of an aeroplane that's far away. You know, it's like, it doesn't matter how far away from, from the plane I get. The engine sound stays pretty much the same, it just gets quieter. Open the camera menu you can set the drone to be still. Okay, okay that's really shit. <laughs> that's 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 rubbish. <laughs> that was that was amazingly terrible. And now I've no idea where the plane's gone. Oh, it's all the way over there. You can just see it. The tiny little plane. Oh, for goodness sake! Come back, Twin Otter. Come back.
Oh, that's like a British Airways advert from the 90s. This. So you can pick your eardrums up off the floor now. And yeah, the sound is still exactly the same, isn't it? So they don't have a flyby in this, is because they, they they haven't their sound engine cannot do aeroplanes that are far away. There we go, finally caught back up. That's where I go back in the cockpit and there's just like alarms going off and beep, 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 stall, stall, pull up. Uh, that we're good though. Still heading down at a thousand feet per minute. We're pretty much almost on the barber pole, but that's fine. A friend of mine once said VNE is a, is a goal, not a limitation. And we can probably just, we can probably ease off on that, aren't we? Mouse curse is gone again, there we go, that's better. Probably ease up on that. Mouse cursor! Probably just head on down at a nice gentle 500 feet per minute actually. No, I don't know what a standard rate of descent is in the, uh, in the Twin Otter, honestly. That three times table calcu calculation I did in my head earlier was basically just for... Um, it works for airliners or jets where you're doing about at least 250 knots. But in this old thing? Oh, God knows. Uh, there we go. Just flicking on the anti-ice here. going through clouds and it's you know <laughs> and then very north of Scotland I, I somehow suspect it's probably freezing temperatures outside this window right now although it is lovely clear weather even if it is probably a bit chilly I mean it's chilly here on the ground in southern England in my room so goodness knows how cold it is out there right now Is this the infamous out of control airspace? Yes, it is. <laughs> In fact, once we get through this cloud, it looks like pretty much smooth sailing all the way over there. Funny looking island, actually. That a weird shape. It's like a whole bunch of little islands. Which bit are we going to? Where's the beach? It's over there. It's that little bit of, of like sand poking out the side there. I think that's where we're going. Put on a bit more throttle we'll speed us up a little bit. Can afford to go a bit faster. This always reminded me of Dagon Fell in Morrowind. Or maybe it should be the other way around. Maybe maybe Dagon Fell is supposed to remind you of Scotland. How's your flight over the Highlands? Hello. Uh, well, we're past the Highlands now. We're over the North Atlantic currently. And just Barra is just over there. That's the place we're going to. A thousand feet to go. Autopilot's still on because why not? Means I can still keep looking out the windows and not worry about flying the plane. But, 
the weather's quite lovely, actually. Quite lovely indeed. Nice and clear. I was expecting this to be all completely socked in, to be honest with you. I thought I was going to have to do some questionable shenanigans in order to get us onto the ground. But maybe not. I mean, questionable shenanigans will probably still occur, just because... Um, Microsoft Flight Sim's fascinating flight model may, may yet still find a way to screw me over. But, um... So far, so good. I feel like maybe they could make the water a bit better. I know I'm nitpicking now, but I feel like they could make the ocean water a little bit sort of, I don't know, just more real looking. It's proper waves out there. Perhaps I'm just spoiled by other games, I guess. I played U-Boat a few months ago and that, that game I think possibly has the most realistic looking waves and water in a game I've ever seen. Astonishingly beautiful. Uh, yeah, that's definitely yeah, that's the beach over there. Do you know, I think we might just kill the autopilot now. I think we're good. Bang! Dead. Killed the autopilot. never that blue. <laughs> I don't know, maybe on a clear day like this. This is what this is what this this sim is particularly good for really, if you ask me. Flying around at fairly low level like this, just looking out windows. That's what Microsoft Flight Sim does best. You've got X-Plane to do everything else with, really. <laughs> Speaking of which, I wonder when X-Plane 12 is going to come out. I'm looking forward to that. Apparently it's going to have a few nice graphical upgrades. Really? You're giving me a terrain warning at like a thousand feet? Over water? That's a little overzealous of you, GPWS. Too low. Unfortunately, I have no idea where the inhibit button for that is, so I guess we're just going to have to put up with it. On the auto feather. I think it thinks I'm trying to land or something. It's, I think it's a bit confused. up so I can take my hands off the controls for a second, put the prop levers back to full, Five, whoa hello, 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 we're good, we're fine, it's all fine here, we're good, how are you? There we go. I should have put the autopilot back in for that, but never mind. Let's <laughs> view out the window. Ah, it's like the Middle Ages out here, isn't it? Look at those little wee buildings with the little footpaths next to them. It's like The Witcher 3 down there. Flaps out. 
coming in. I think we're just going to head straight in for the landing here, honestly. We're going in pretty much the right direction for the wind. So that's good. speed gauge really. If we can just keep it at about 80 knots that would be lovely. Final notch of flaps go flat 40. Might have to try and stop this thing in a hurry and I don't know what the braking performance is going to be like on sand so <laughs> probably not really going to be using the brakes. We're probably just going to be using the reverse thrust. Wow, it's really sunny. That that beach is just like super bright. I've no idea how they actually do it a proper approach here, by the way. In case that wasn't obvious. I'm just gonna try and plonk it on the sand. what it does best. In fact, we we actually went backwards slightly. There we go. <laughs> we'll just head over to the car park, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Barra. We did survive, yeah. To my surprise as much as anyone else's, trust me. I've been cursed with bad luck whenever I've tried to come to Barra and descend before. The last time I tried to do it, I, I, I tried to follow the manual and, you know, on takeoff, not exceed the maximum torque on the dials. And by doing that, the aircraft never got enough thrust to get off the ground. And um, I started my takeoff roll over there somewhere. I think it was around there near the windsock. And I went all the way down, down the beach, hit a sandbar, went boom into the air and then plonk. And that's how I learned that you have to apply maximum throttle in order to take off in the Aerosoft Twin Otter, even if you go over the maximum torque. <laughs> I suspect not very accurate to the real aeroplane, but it is what it is. This is one of the few airports in the game they have got right, though, actually. I think it's, it's I, th I think it's one of the ones they included in the region pack for the UK. The one that you can download for free from the marketplace when you install the game. I think I have the American one installed. I have this. I think I might have some of the Europe ones, and I think I have Japan as well. I need to get the Australian one installed, actually, because flying around Australia would be quite fun. All right, cool. We're here, everybody. Welcome. Look at that windsock, man. It's horizontal. It's pretty windy out here. Drone cam, why is the drone sideways? Who knows? It just is. Going 
go, go for a little walk around the car park. Oh, exotic. But yeah, no, this is pretty legit. This is what the actual place is like. It's just a beach with a tiny terminal building next to it. Whoa. Hello, Mr. Blurry Truck of Death. This building has no door. What's going on? I guess this is where they keep the fire engines. <laughs> they have a sign for the runway. <laughs> runway 15, everybody. Right there. Up windsock. Caution, beware of sandblast during aircraft movement. The heck? Yes, that look look at that on the sand out there. What's that? It's that Shy Hulud under the dunes. What's that about? That's, uh, I, that's that. That's water waves, isn't it? That's that's uh, that's the game's water waves just poking out from under the sand. That's what that is. Well, should we go up into into the wee little control button tower here? What's up here? Oh wow, they did the little screens and everything. Very nice. It has an honest to goodness control to us, I guess. Maybe it has an approach control of this place. Interesting. Let's turn off all the things. Your damper off. Booster pumps off. There's a thing down here, isn't there? The vent fan. It just sounds like a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> this vent fan, like like fancy fancy air airway speak for for vacuum cleaner. And then you have the inverter up there, which you can't click on for some reason. It's non-functional. A non-functional inverter. A useful thing to have, really, if you ask me. Not a very useful thing. Alright, we're here. Get out. <laughs> Get off my plane, you scum. Wish I could open the back door, actually. I don't think I can, though. Unless there's a keyboard shortcut for opening the doors that I don't know about. Yeah, it's a nice airport, isn't it? I mean, the last time I tried to come here the same, the weather was was much worse. But, uh, yeah, it's nice. I like it. Um, and, yeah, I, I forgot to log that entire flight with Fly UK. So I'm a bit salty about that, but I guess I'll just do the return leg with, with Fly UK. Later or something. And, uh... Yeah, I'll just do that instead. Only one gets to stay on the plane. 
Right, ladies and gents, boys and girls, thank you very much for coming along this afternoon. I just decided to do stream this for a bit on a whim. It's nearly four o'clock. Uh, right. I hope that was fun. I might put this on YouTube. If I did put it on YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this relaxed little... Uh, this this little little sojourn up to up to Barra. Um, the scenery was very pretty. Ten out of ten would do again. Probably will. Um, yeah, I'll do I'll do a few more little streams like this occasionally during the week. I think because I I quite enjoy it. Just um, I might throw in some Euro Truck as well at some point as well because because that's fun too. But I just need to get it all downloaded and modded etc. It'd take a while. Um. I might do some X-Plane as well. We'll see. But it's just nice and it's relaxed and it's chilled out and it's it's good. I enjoy it. I like just sitting here and chatting with the with, with you folks in the Twitch chat about whatever. It's cool. Um yeah, not much else to say. I'll be back tomorrow with our usual scheduled streams. Saturdays and Sundays. Um, I think I've decided I'm going to stream some Dominions 5 because there were a few requests for that. Um, I, I, I put out the call on on the Discord for, for some stream suggestions because I couldn't really decide what to do um, next stream-wise. And I, 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 a lot of people said do some Dominions 5 and I have had requests for that over the years. So we're going to do some Dominions 5 uh, on, on tomorrow and the day after potentially. And then after that, I'm not sure. I'm still trying to decide what the next, like, proper stream series will be. Um, I've got a few short things on the short list. Like Gothic 2 and Dragon Age and uh, Stalker Anomaly as well. That's one thing I might have a go at. And also The Quest, which is a cool retro-style open-world RPG that I'm quite, I'm a bit of a fan of thinking about maybe doing that but I'm not sure I haven't decided yeah that's about all there is to say everybody I will see you tomorrow unless something comes up probably won't though so I'll see you tomorrow folks have a good one doodaloo